What's up, buff dudes and girls? Here in the gym once again, and we are on to day two of the beginner phase of the dumbbell only program. And much like we normally do with any kind of workout, we're gonna start with some mobility. Now in the last video, we went over just a few uh, mobility drills or exercises you can perform when doing full body, which this workout is gonna be full body. So usually you'll start with a little leg. As we did in the last video, we did some full squats, which are perfect to opening the hips up and kind of getting you mobile enough to get ready to get down in that full squat position. But today we're gonna go over a few different ones so that way hopefully you'll be able to kind of pick and choose uh, which ones work for you. But we did pass-throughs on the other video and this one I kind of like to do some external rotations which essentially just hold your palms up and grab a band like this and just be pulling it apart. But what you wanna do is keep your elbows tight to your body just like so. And you don't want too much tension on there where it's too difficult and you can't quite pull apart. So kind of get a little bit of looseness in there, a little slack. And that way when you're externally rotating your arms outward. You feel a little bit of burn in kind of the back area of that shoulder. And what that is, is activating the rotator cuffs there. So you feel a little burn in there. It's not a huge uh, range of motion, as you can tell, it's pretty short, but you'll get that activated, kind of warmed up, ready to go. It's not necessarily a mobility exercise, but it is kind of just warming that rotator cuff up to get ready for any kind of strain and, and exercise that you're about to you know, do. Um, now, the next one is gonna be just a little bit of a lower body work. Now we got a bench here. And this is going to be the deep, uh, deep lunge position. So you're going to be put one foot, almost kind of like you're doing a Bulgarian split squat. What you're going to do is lower that knee down so it touches the floor. And immediately you're going to feel a stretch in your quad and a little bit in your hip adductor here, uh, hip flexor, excuse me. And they're just going to be kind of moving forward and back, nice and slow. So you feel kind of like, get that nice stretch in there. Again, you can kind of move positionings here to kind of feel it in a little bit of the lower back. So you kind of move around, any kind of tightness, you can hold on a little bit. And then you can go right into more of a lower back uh, stretch in thoracic spine mobility where you put one arm down and you'll be rotating out. And you can push against that leg if you'd like. So you're getting this stretch in the quad, the hip flexor, a little bit in the adductor here. And now get a little stretch in that lower back and also a little bit mobility in that thoracic spine area too in the rotation. And then you can switch sides too. So you go that one side, maybe 10, 12 count, and then right onto the next side. Kind of hold. And then you go right into the next leg. So you can switch sides, kind of work in that area here. Oh yeah, it's feeling pretty tight. So you gotta hold a little bit, move around, kind of rock it forward just a little bit. And then again, right into the twist. Switch sides. Now don't feel like you have to immediately be super flexible and kind of get that full kind of range of motion and all this kind of thing. Just slowly work up to it. So that's the idea. You want to keep consistent with something like this so that way the longer you do it, the more mobile you get, the more flexible you get, the better you feel, especially before hitting a workout. Here we go. We've got the dumbbells set up. We're going to be doing farmer squats. Now, if you're familiar with trap bar deadlifts, it's a similar type of positioning as that. You can either start in the standing position, you can unrack the dumbbells from the rack and start in this position here, which is similar to a squat in the sense that you'll be utilizing the stretch reflex, bringing down to the bottom position, filling that stretch and using that elasticity in the muscle to help you get to that top position. So down, or you can grab it from the floor and that's gonna mimic a trap bar deadlift because you're starting in that dead position rather than top position. So now you can see my stance cannot be necessarily that wide. The wider your stance is, it's gonna inhibit the movement of the dumbbells. So you're gonna try to keep it with a little narrower stance that way the dumbbells, it's gonna accommodate the movement in the dumbbells there, so it should be a little bit more narrow than shoulder. It makes it difficult sometimes because it can limit your range of motion. The more narrow your stance is, the less you can squat kind of between the legs. As you can tell, as the wider the stance go, the easier it is to squat really low because you'll feel like you can be able to squat between your legs, but as the closer the stance gets, you won't be able to do that. So you gotta really work on the proper positioning on this one. What you wanna do is try to keep a vertical torso as much as you can and try to get the hip crease 
maybe slightly below the knee, if not at the same level, 90 degree angle there. That way, you're getting the full benefit of the exercise. But if you can't get into that position comfortably, don't worry about it. Just start working in that smaller range of motion first and slowly work up to a better range of motion until you're comfortable. So again, it's kind of working on that mobility in there and the flexibility too. Next exercise is gonna be the back and we are doing prone rows. So as you can see, we have a pretty uh, high bench here because what you wanna do is make sure it's long enough or high enough so that way your arms can be pretty much straight at the beginning position. And it's a prone row for obvious reasons, you can be in the prone position. So once you lay flat on the bench here, you want your sternum firmly placed against the bench, nice and solid in the plank position here. You're gonna be grabbing the dumbbells with an overhand grip and you're just gonna be pulling upwards as high as you can. So when you bring those elbows up, you're gonna really feel that contraction, the shoulder blades coming together and uh, feel it all in those back muscles. Now with this, what's so great about it is because you're in this prone positioning and lying position, you really can't have any cheating going on. And there's gonna be no leg bounce, there's gonna be no hip flexion, it's pretty much just all in the back and a little bit in the rear delts and also the biceps as a secondary muscle group. But what you wanna do is not go too heavy because if you're going too heavy, you won't be able to get that full range of motion. You won't be able to lift the weight all the way to the top position. So go light enough so you can get your elbows very high, as high as you can, and that's gonna force your chest to come up slightly, but also pulling your shoulder blades together. And that's when you know you're doing it right. Now that is one good back exercise. Legs done, back's done, time for some chest. And we are gonna be working on the clavicular portion of the chest, the upper chest here. And it's pretty simple to do that, is you're just going to use an incline bench. Now, due to it being an incline, it's going to create an angle which is forcing more activation in the upper chest here. Much like we've said in a lot of videos, What's good about a lot of exercises, especially the dumbbells, is you can change the angles very quickly and even the motions too to kind of activate certain muscle groups a little bit more, put a little bit more emphasis on this. But we're just gonna be doing a standard incline press because this is, of course, the beginner phase. We wanna keep it pretty simple. Um, so we're just getting this incline position here, taking the dumbbells up and just pressing them straight up. Now, as you can tell, pushing up to the top position, I'm still coming inward with the dumbbells here. Now, keeping the shoulders back, um, down and back, depressed and retracted there, it's gonna help activate the chest more, put more emphasis on it, because it's been doing the majority of the work. And as you press up, you can slowly bring it inward and you feel a little extra activation in the chest because of that extra motion. So you're going really wide, feel that stretch in the chest, pressing upward, and get a nice squeeze to that top position there. Whew. Thankfully this one's pretty simple. And we're keeping it simple. Beginner's face, you know, and all that jazz. It'll get tougher, trust me, in the later phases. So we're working up in the muscle group pyramid and we are on to shoulders. And so we're gonna be doing some seated shoulder press. Now, day one of uh, the beginner phase here was standing shoulder press. And we talked about the differences between standing and seated. Standing is gonna require a bit more stabilization, activation in the core, um, because what you're, what's happening in that standing position you're already a bit unbalanced there, um, but as you press that weight up to the top position, your center of gravity is raising with it and it's, you're gonna feel like you're a little bit more uh, unstable. Um, so if you're having issues with some of that instability or even balance issues, what you wanna do is take a seated position. And this day specifically requires you to take a seated position just to switch things up a little bit. And now you're gonna feel a bit more stable and grounded, but your core still has to be activated because your center of gravity is raising. And as you press the weight up to the top position, uh, for me personally, I like to keep the elbows a little bit tighter to the body in that starting position, even rotating the, the palms facing each other slightly. So when you press up, you can slightly rotate out and get that full uh, extension and contraction at that top position and try to elevate the shoulders upwards. And that's gonna help contract the traps. So your trapezius is gonna help stabilize the shoulder joint. So if you elevate your shoulders at the top position, you're gonna feel a little bit more stable in that position. But what we should do is try to hold that position a little bit because it's gonna require your shoulders to activate a little bit more to stabilize 
those dumbbells. And as the dumbbells are working independently from each other, it's gonna take a little bit to really help them uh, stay in that position. So slightly hold in that position and then lower it down to the bottom position and then start your next rep. And so if you want it to be a bit more easy, if you're still feeling a little bit unstable, uh, what you can do is actually uh, sit on a bench that has a back to it. So that way you have something to lean against and it's gonna stabilize yourself that much more. Although much like we were talking about in the first episode, the day one, I would suggest you try to test yourself, try to make it difficult on yourself so that way it's gonna force you um, to get better and stronger. Oh yeah, last exercise, the twisting planks. And the name pretty much explains it all as you can see. You're in a plank position and you'd be twisting from side to side. Now this is stressing the abdominals, the lower back, or I should say the rectus spinae muscles that run along the spine and also your obliques because of the twisting motion, you can feel a lot of engagement in the obliques as you go from side to side there. And this is gonna be 30 total reps, so 15 each side. A couple of things you wanna keep in mind in this exercise is you don't want your hips to dip too low. You really try to keep that plank position and that's gonna help stress the core to activate it because it's stabilizing that spine in that position. And then you're gonna slowly bring one side of the hip down just tap the floor. As soon as you do that, you're gonna be twisting to the next side, tapping the floor, and you're gonna continue that nice fluid motion for the 30 reps. And you're gonna feel that burn very quickly in the muscles. You have to hold that position, but also go through that motion too, and contracting throughout that motion. There we go, that wraps up day two of the beginner phase of the dumbbell only program. We got one more day, but as the program says, there's gonna be a rest day in between and then uh, we're gonna be ready to hit another full body workout. So thanks for joining us today for this workout and I will see you on day three. Yes, folks.